What's going on, everybody? This is Brian Z, aka Franchise Play, and I'm here with another episode of Ask FP. And before I get into the questions, I want to break break a little bit of something down. Something I've kind of been doing, but I haven't really let you guys in on uh, technically. Uh, what I do every single episode is I pick the most compelling question that I receive through the week, and I make that like my title question for this episode of Ask FP, right? Now, you guys might have noticed, may not, I have a pretty frequent or consistent uh, contributor to Ask FP named Matt Price, pretty! and he usually has like some of the most compelling questions, so I usually have to take one of his questions and I make it the lead question, right? But this week, somebody has knocked him off the spot. Gene Adams, I think it was Gene Adams 84, uh, his question was uh, the one I had to lead with. So you guys already see what the name, what that question is. Now, here's what I haven't been doing. I've been kind of having the question buried just somewhere in the in the whole Ask FP video. Going forward, that question is going to be first. So I think that's a good way to kind of make good on the video. So maybe you clicked on the video just because you saw that question, right? And you wanted to hear what the answer was. So I'm gonna put that right there at the beginning. And then, you know, everything after that is pretty much a bonus for you. So, you know, if you want to stay for the whole show, which I hope you do, go ahead and do that. But, you know, so that's that, you know. So we're ready to jump into these questions. And like I just said, the first one that I just mentioned, uh, that's going to be what we started off with. So let's go. We got from Gene Adams, 84, a.k.a. Pat Keir, 11, 12. Says, Mr. Mazik, he and you know my family name, says, give me your thoughts on Hulk Hogan. The real American racist. It's a real strong word, and it's obviously one that seems to be uh, somewhat, uh, um, somewhat, somewhat earned for the comments. For people that don't know, I don't imagine how you don't know, but the people that don't know, there's a uh, some sort of tape. I don't know if it's audio or video of Hulk Hogan using some language, some racial tirade, racial epithets or whatever, uh, using the n-word a few times and uh, using some, just basically saying some stuff you shouldn't be saying. Now you guys know normally I take about 45-50 seconds to answer these questions, but this particular one I'm going to spend a little bit more time on and I may do this moving forward for the Ask FP feature question. Um, but here's my thing. Does Hulk Hogan deserve to be fired and, uh, from, and you know, be in a situation where he drastically hurt his earning potential? Absolutely. Without a question, there's no doubt in my mind, there's no question, yes. There is a consequence for your actions, right? Here's the other side of that. Um, first and foremost, we have to have a little bit more of a, for, uh, of a forgiving spirit when it comes to human beings, period. Uh, a lot of times we think because it's an athlete or it's a famous person, whatever they do, so, so what, good for them, crash and break them down, right? None of us would want to have, you know, our lives judged in that way. Uh, and, and I always pose this question to people who I, I find to be extremely hard on this particular subject. Have you ever, in your life, said a racial slur? Have you ever, in your life, had a moment, a time, and I'm not saying it was just this one moment for Hulk Hogan because I don't believe it was. I believe this is just how he talks. I believe it was, if it was a Hispanic person who was talking about it, he was a racial slur for them. If it was Polish, if it was Chinese, Japanese, he just is a guy who speaks that way, right? Which is obviously wrong. Um, but I ask, have you ever in your life said a racial slur? Uh, and I can tell you right now, I have had those times in my life and I was wrong when I did those things. But would I want you to eternally judge me based off of what I said or did that day? on a given day in my life. Um, what I wanna be, have you tell me that this is who I am from now on because, because of what I said this day. And unfortunately for people who are famous and in the limelight, they have to deal with that. You know, that's what happens. They say something and that's it, they're done. You know, because you're gonna get 100% judged like that. Here's another question I have for you. Do you know anybody in your life right now of whom talks that way? behaves that way and they're either your friend, they're your mother, they're your father, they're your grandfather, there's somebody to that into that in, in that, you know, of that ilk to you 
and you look over it because they're who they are to you. How many people in our life do we know that speak that way? Now, I'm not saying it's right because it's not. It's absolutely wrong. But what I'm saying is, are you judging Hulk Hogan harder than you judge them? Are you judging Hulk Hogan harder than you would want to be judged yourself? That's the question that I pose to everyone uh, in regards to that. So those are my thoughts on Hulk Hogan. Um, and it's unfortunate, I, you know, I hate that it happened, you know, the Hulkamaniac just like every, most everybody else, right? Uh, and, I, and I'm not gonna sit up here and say I don't like him anymore and all of that, and he's done, you know, and it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that I met him and took pictures with him. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It's just from a human being standpoint, you know, it sucks when you see somebody uh, whether self-inflicted or not, have to go through what he's going through, you know? So that's that for the question. I spent a lot of time on that. Now you guys know normally I won't spend that much time on a question. And you know, a lot of times it probably won't necessarily be anything that, that, that is that compelling. But this particular one I felt took a little bit of time for me to address. So let's go ahead and jump into the rest of the questions Starting off, and obviously I'm going to tell you everything else from this point on is a lot lighter <laughs> than the whole Hogan question. But George Poo uh, says, are you a sabermetric or intangible guy? I'm a sabermetric guy. Um, I am definitely a sabermetric guy. Um, I also, I don't totally throw out intangibles, but I do believe that in sports, the sabermetrics, the sabermetrics is mostly related to baseball. But advanced statistics is something that people look at in basketball and football as well. Uh, and I, I think there's validity to both, and I think both have to be looked at with perspective. But I definitely believe in sabermetrics, uh, but I don't totally discount uh, intangibles either because those are very important in all sports, baseball included. Santo N says, can you please do NBA 2K16 on Xbox One? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, I got it. I had a little brain fart right there. Okay, so um, you want me to do the series or coverage for Xbox One. I can't make promises about that because my personal preference for NBA 2K is PlayStation. Now, for, for whatever reason, for a lot of the EA games, I kind of prefer it on, on Xbox One. Um, like the hockey, FIFA, and P, uh, Rory McIlroy, I prefer it on Xbox One. But I don't know, so I can't make promises about that. Weston Flores says, is J.D. Martinez an MVP candidate? I think he would be if Detroit makes the playoffs. I think if Detroit makes a really strong push and they make the playoffs, um, which is you know not out of the realm of possibility, but if they did, I think he'd be a legitimate candidate if he obviously he continues to play well. Um, because having to do, you know, having to somewhat keep the Tiger offense afloat with Miguel Cabrera out, um, so I'll give you like some magic numbers. If J.D. Martinez hits 42 home, 40, 42 home runs, driving is 110, 115 runs, and the Tigers make the playoffs, he's definitely a, a candidate. I don't think he'll win though, but he's a candidate. Western Flores also says, will the Astros win their division? It's tough to say. I, I, I'm going to say no, just, just, just off the top of my head, I'm going to say no. And the reason being is because I really just think that right about now, the, the Los Angeles Angels, uh, I mean, they are really, really playing extremely well. Now, we do see that, um, that Mike Trout is out uh, right now, but I don't think the injury is too serious. Uh, but I think that right now, I think they are solidifying themselves as the best team in their division. And I mean, uh, they have only a one game lead on the Astros right now, but down the stretch, I expect the Astros to, to continue to pull away. So that's my take on them. Now, Weston Flores also says, should the Cubs make Stalin Castro or Addison Russell a center fielder? Uh, I don't think Stalin Castro could play center field, to be honest, uh, but no. Uh, Addison Russell, I believe, is an athlete, good enough athlete to play center field. But the, the Cubs don't really need to do that. There's actually a guy uh, coming up in the system, Albert Almora, who is an awesome center fielder, and he's showing the hit tool as well as of late. And I think he's the guy they have in their mind who could be a center fielder. I think he could even he has even he even has a chance to make the opening day roster next year, or at least spend some time in the majors next year. So I think he's the guy down the road as a center fielder. You want to move Addison to short, and probably ultimately end up moving Castro altogether. 
Uh, if anything, maybe you move him to third and Brian moves to left. We'll see. David Brown says, how long do you think it'll take for the Sixers to become playoff contenders? Keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Um, they need an impact player on the perimeter. Really. Um, even if Joel Embiid never comes to play, never, ever gets healthy, they have a nice front court uh, with Okafor and Nerlens Noel, but they need front, they need backcourt players, back backcourt um, impact players. So when that happens, that's when they'll be legit. Uh, David Brown also says, "What do you think of the Eagles' moves this season? I think they'll win the division and with an 8 11 and five record." Um, I think that moves are pretty decent. Sam Bradford was definitely a smart, uh, smart pickup, especially if he stays healthy. Obviously, DeMarco Murray's a stud. Um, they have an awesome offense. You know you got a great offensive line. You can let arguably the best guard in NFL just walk with Ed and Evan Mack. So, but I personally think the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the division and the Super Bowl. That's a prediction I'm making. So, that's what I think. David Brown says, what NBA team do you think has the best starting five? I think it's the Spurs. I certainly understand why you say that. I mean, Duncan, Marcus Aldridge, Kawhi Leonard, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker. I clearly understand what you say. I'm not even Manu. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, not Manu. Um, uh, you know, Danny Green. Danny Green. Manu comes off the bench. Uh, but I clearly get that, right? But I, I really, Cleveland has the best time about I mean, Kyrie Irving, it doesn't even matter who they pick at the two guard. Even if it has to be Iman Shumpert, LeBron, Tristan Thompson, Timothy Mons, I'm sorry, Kevin Love. Timothy Mozgov, or even if they went, you know, let Love play the center and had, you know, and Tristan Thompson or Tristan Thompson play, you know, whatever. It's the, I think it's the best starting five. David Brown says, if healthy, what are your expectations for Sam Bradford? Which we have talked a little bit about him before. I think if he's healthy, I think he is going to be a top 10 quarterback in the NFL. I think the time away is really, I mean, he's already, he's already in here, a passion guy anyway. But the time away being hurt, um, I think it's really going to have a positive impact on him. I think the offense, believe it or not, fits him pretty well because I think he can be even better at it than Nick Foles. Foles didn't throw any interceptions. Uh, really took care of the ball, but Foles didn't have necessarily the arm to go down the field like Bradford does. And I, I think Bradford could have a good year. But I still think the Cowboys win the division. George Poop says, what is your favorite NBA game that you've ever watched live? Um, this game one of the Bulls Cavs semifinal series was really, really good, right? That's the best one in recent memory. Um, but overall, I have to say, Michael Jordan, the shot against Cleveland. No, the double, I don't know, it's between the double nickel, Michael Jordan 55 against New York when he came back with the 45. You come back like Jordan wearing the 4 5, you know, Jay Z, yeah. Uh, that that one or the shot against Cleveland, the, the, yeah, yeah, that one's yeah, those are crazy. George Poole says, "What do you think the Jets will do next year?" I think the Jets still need a quarterback. Um, what they need, I won't even say they need a quarterback. They need stability at quarterback. I can't really imagine them doing too much without stability at quarterback. So they need to get that for sure. Um, Simon Torbe Sutherland says, have you seen the Kendrick Lamar red blue shoes? What do you think about them and will it help in problems with gangs? Um, I haven't seen the shoes, but my understanding of them is supposed to be something that unite the bloods and the cribs, obviously the red, the blood, blue, the crib, whatever. Um, I don't think that that will help very much problems with gang violence. Uh, proceeds can go to wherever proceeds want to go to, but you have to change uh, mindsets. You have to change uh, people's concept of right and wrong, what they hold most high in their life. And if you hold the law most high in your life, then you ultimately you're gonna run up. You're gonna run into some issues because there's gonna be some times where the law doesn't work the way you want it to. So that's when it's got to be some higher. It's got to be God that you hold at the highest in my personal opinion, and uh, and that's when you'll see people start to change behaviors because people will always let you down. 
Yovan Radvanovic says, do you think that Duncan can get his sixth ring this season? Absolutely. He can. Will, will he? I don't know. But he could ab absolutely win again. No, there's no question about it. They could win again. John Cena, uh, John Cena, Gabe Elder, whose name is John Cena's day. How far do you see the Pir Pirates going this year? Um, the Pirates have, I think, everything they need to be a legitimate World Series uh, threat. I do. Uh, they have the ace at the top of the at the top of the rotation in Garrett Cole. Uh, they have AJ Burnett as a backup guy. They even have other depth at the, in, 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 in the rotation. You have a legit leader and star in, in McCutcheon. You have some other guys that have stepped up behind him as well. Um, and, but the one part of the Pirates that worries me is I know Mark Melanson is leading the in leading the major leagues in saves. I understand that, but I just don't trust him. I don't. I really don't trust. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just one of those guys, soft-throwing closers or guys who don't blaze it up as closers. Unless you're Dennis Eckersley, you make me nervous. Okay, so, hey. Mr. Root says, Summer League in my gym got me boosted. Got me boosted, too. I don't even think that was an ask yet, Pete. I think he was just responding to something. But whatever, Mr. Root, we're going to put it in anyway. So, yeah, Summer League is one of the many things that's got me boosted about uh, NBA 2K16. I am very excited. Can't wait. Godspeed says, am I crazy to think that Dorio Green Beckham is going to be the next best wide receiver in a couple years if he keeps his head straight? Potential. Uh, I definitely think the potential is there. I mean, the guy was the number one player in high school um, when he came to the University of Missouri. Um, but, yeah, had some issues off the field or whatever. There's also some, some issues about the way he gets out of his breaks how he works off of jams at the line of scrimmage. I've uh, heard a lot of talent evaluators make reference to that. Um, how well he competes for the ball down the field, which a guy his size, you would, you would think that that wouldn't be the case. So he may get his stuff together in terms of being off the field, but he also has to make sure that he uh, plays with passion, which may not be necessarily connected. So we'll see. Firefly2205 says, should Melo request a trade from the Knicks if they don't make the playoffs this year? Uh, you know what? Melo is in a situation that's, to me, similar to um, LeBron James. I think when you say, hey, I'm going home, right? Uh, going home, Ross, going to be a 2K15. You can go get that, download that uh, BSEN franchise, play 99. Hey, anyway, when you do that, I think you kind of paint yourself in a corner. You can't just up and leave because you made this decision that was kind of like supposed to be like this passionate type of decision. And um, now, because your team's not winning, you ask for a trade, you just can't. It's, it would be horrible for his brand. And I don't think he, I don't think he, can, I don't think he has that option. Uh, Firefly2205 says, also says, which NBA team is more destined to make a blockbuster trade this season? The Boston Celtics, the Los Angeles Lakers, or the New York Knicks? Um, I don't think there's any way the Celtics make a blockbuster trade. I don't imagine who would be moving for what. I mean, I don't, they don't even have anybody to trade that I would think would be a blockbuster. I guess for any of those teams, it would have to be the Lakers. Um, I don't see the Knicks having the, 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 the flexibility to do it. Players to offer, unless you did trade Melo, which like I said, I don't think it's going to happen. So I have to say it'd be the Lakers. Uh, maybe even trade Kobe. Did I say that? Yep. Yeah. So anyway. Will Andrew, uh, Firefly also says, will Andrew Luck be the best quarterback in the NFL in five to ten years? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I'm not as high on Andrew Luck as everybody else is. I think he throws a lot of interceptions, man. And I'm not sure that's going to just go away as quickly as people expect it to. I, I think he's an awesome leader, a really good uh, football personality. But, I don't know, I'm just not where everybody else is with him. Firefly2205 also says, does John Cena really very young talent? Example, Bray Wyatt, Kevin Owens, Rusev. That is the craziest concept. Who, say, who says that? I mean, who says that? I mean, every one of those guys, maybe with the exception of Bray Wyatt, which I wouldn't even say is his fault, but every one of those guys' career has been elevated because of the few they were in with Cena. I mean, Cena actually agreed to let those guys beat him 
Except for Bray, I believe. Fair and square, straight up win. Not even dirty stuff involved. He had to agree to that as the guy he is with the WWE at that stature. The concept that he's bearing young talent, it, 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 people can criticize John Cena for a lot of things, but I don't think that's why. That's just me. But Matt Price is here. Just know he doesn't have this feature question, he's still here. He says, how many more years do you think LeBron has left in his prime? That's a good question. It's a good question, Matt. You almost got that. In his prime, three. Before there's a drop off, three. In this season, upcoming season included, I would say three. He'll be about 33 going into 34 years old after that, and I think that's when he starts to get a little bit more regular. But still probably going to be three top five players in the world. So. Matt Price also says, do you think we'll see more players like uh, Jennings and Mujie going overseas for a year instead of playing in college? I do think that that's something that's going to happen for sure, especially if you start to see those guys having success. I definitely think that's going to happen. What I hope you don't see, and I heard, I thought I heard some whispers about this. Actually, I think Jeremy Tyler might have did this. The guy's not even finished in high school and going over. That's, um, come on, bro. Go and get, get the high school diploma. You know, College ain't for everybody, but get the high school diploma. Please do that. So I don't have a problem with guys skipping college. I mean, college, you know, when people make you go to college, you're going to do well. You do well when you want to be there. So, you know, Zachary says, in your opinion, who is the greatest superstar to never win the WWE Championship? I say Razor Ramon, Roddy Piper, or Booker T. I think all three of those guys are really good. I'm probably leaning more towards Booker T out of that particular trio. But the first person that came to my mind is Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect was good on the mic, outstanding in the ring, and only thing he ever had was the Intercontinental title. So he'd be my guy. Simon Torbay Sumlin says, what did you think of the NBA Players Awards? Do you think the players rated highly? I think that you have to just keep doing things, right? And I think affiliation and uh, broadcasting and um, the whole presentation of it is what's going to make it carry more weight um, and maybe the you know certain like like depends on what you get for the award you know if they start offering a good amount of money or something like that or something that players really hold in high esteem then I think it would have even an even bigger a bigger bigger place in in the minds of uh, players so we'll see uh, he also says if you were an NBA coach what style would you implement in your team the style I would implement in my team would be the one that fits the personnel that I have. I think that's the biggest mistake that sometimes coaches make. Coaches want to make everybody fit their system, but sometimes you have to make the system all the time. You have to make the system fit the players. You can't try to fit square pegs in the circle holes. You can't do it. I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that coaches make. You have to match the guys you have. Walsh Davis says, who would you rather build a team around and which is a better point guard or which and which is better, a good point guard or a good center? The best between a good point guard and a good center is, uh, I mean, I'm going to build my team around a better, the best player. I think you can build a team around any player at any position. I don't think a good point guard is better than a good center. I don't think a good center is better than a good point guard. A superstar who is a leader and buys into the system that you're running and is, it fits the system that you're running is the guy you should build around, no matter what position he plays. Walter Davis says, how good do you think Ziggy Ansah will be this year? I'm hoping he's a Pro Bowl. Uh, he's, I'm hoping he's Pro Bowl good. Okay. Um, I think he, you, he's got a lot to prove. You know, you've taken Damakon Sue off that defensive line in Detroit. Now you, you, you're going to see a lot of guys have to really step up on that defense because that's a really big time guy who's not going to be there to draw all that attention. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that entire defense. The, the entire defense, not even just the defensive line, because guys, a presence like in Damakon Sue makes everybody on the entire defense better. So. Some guys are, you know, not, are not going to be even having the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one as much as they were. Jose Miguel says, what happened to your MLB all-time roster? You had to bring that up, Jose. Man, um, believe it or not, I still have, I think I still, I'm pretty sure I do. I still have the file. 
Um, I got decently, decent way through it. I was still working it even though I wasn't making videos for it. Um, there's no, put it like this, Jose, there's no reason for me ever to not do that because show the MLB The Show has the awesome feature of being able to carry over saves and stuff like that. But here's the problem. You know, okay, I changed that. I got mixed up. Actually, there's a, the reason why I kind of stopped, and I'm remembering this as I'm answering this question, is because you can carry over saves from your seasons, but you can't carry over the rosters. So I would have to theoretically make that roster every single year, and that's just something that I was like, man, in baseball, in basketball is one thing, but in baseball with so many players, it was just too daunting of a task. So I expect them to make it where you can carry over roster saves, but until they do that, I probably won't do it. So sorry about that. Matt Price also says, have you been to the famous Wiener Circle in Chicago? Man, I had never heard of the Wiener Circle, and it don't really sound like no place I would ever go. So tell me, if you know what the Wiener Circle is, tell me what it is, and if I'm not too afraid of it, I may go. But Wieners, I don't like hot dogs, so I don't even know why I'll go. So if that's what it's about, I don't know. Brandon Noel says, would you rather see TJ Dillashaw fight who, Jose Aldo or Conor McGregor? Um, neither. Because Dillashaw's bantamweight, and I know McGregor can't make bantamweight, um, and hope Jose Aldo probably could, but I don't think he would want to do that. Um, I want to see Dillashaw fight Dominic Cruz. That's who I, that's the fight that needs to be made uh, when Dominic's back. Uh, Brandon Knowles says, when Ronda Rousey beats Vetch Correa, Vetch Correa, when do you see her and Misha fighting? I wouldn't be surprised if they fall in December. I really wouldn't. Um, in, in the year-end card, have them fight in December. But, you know what else? They could fight. I want to, I forget what, when it's supposed, I think it's somewhere like May or something like that, UFC 200. They're, gonna, they're making a big deal out of UFC 200, and I can see Ronda fight. I know they're going to want Ronda on the card at UFC 200, right? And unless they can get a fight with Cyborg, unless they get Cyborg in there, I, I, there's no other fighter that would make big, more sense for her to be fighting than uh, Misha. So I'm thinking UFC 200 unless they can get an agreement with Cyborg. Brandon Knowles says, can you explain to me why Antonio Brown has a better rating than Dez Bryant in Madden 16? I, I think... Then, is Dan Bryant a more exciting wide receiver? For the most part, yeah. Is he, like, as an athlete, just devastating? Yes. But Antonio Brown makes the game look so easy. He, he runs routes perfectly. He has awesome hands. Man, the dude is, you got, I mean, he may not make a thousand one-hand catches and bowl guys over and do the physical things that Dan Bryant does, but in terms of reading defenses, running the right routes and having great hands, Antonio, they, uh, Antonio Brown is really awesome. So that that's my explanation. Uh, Brandon also also says if John Cena faces Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship and wins, what will you do? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna be there. So I don't know what I'm probably gonna cheer because I'm probably gonna be the only John Cena fan there. Uh, but um, I don't know. I, I do I think that's a good thing to do. Probably not. Uh, John had the title 482 times, man. You know, he don't really need to have it anymore unless you got something worked in real cool there. Maybe Seamus comes and cashes it in on him right there. You know, whatever. But cashing in money in the bank. But I don't know. I, I, don't, I won't be distraught, but, I, you know. Connor Massey also says, What are your thoughts on the Troy Toe Whiskey trade? Was it a good trade? I don't like it from, I don't like it for Toronto. Toronto got a way, it has enough hitting. Best hit team in the majors, and I like Jose Reyes. I just, to me, if you're gonna give up Reyes and prospects, to me, you should have been getting pitching. And I took the took whiskey's an awesome shortstop, arguably the best shortstop in the game, but I, just, I, didn't, I didn't get it. I, don't, I didn't get it. No, I, and the weird thing while well, I was at the Cubs Colorado game last night, too, so. Uh, Connor Massey also says, do you think it was a good choice to uphold Tom Brady's decision? I mean, Tom Brady's suspension. He says he thinks it was a good decision. Um, I think it was a good decision. Um, based on the evidence that they presented, it looks totally like Tom Brady was aware of what was going on. Everybody pretty much figured that. I think most people's issue is, is this a big enough deal to be suspending 
this guy for this amount of time. I think that's what most people were really kind of on. And it is what it is, man. When you do things you're not supposed to do, you got to reap the consequences. You got to reap the, the, you know, you got to reap what you sow, man. You, you know, consequences, you know, there's consequences to your actions. And that's what we saw. And yeah, stick with it. So I appreciate you guys watching a pretty long version of Ask MP. God bless and peace.